So, hello YouTube, from the engine cave or something, <coughs> excuse me, today we're going to be changing the turbo from the OM651 and the first thing you do, you remove those items, engine cover and the intake pipe, that's pretty simple, everybody can do that, next thing you do is you Take the air cleaner screws, take them off, and air cleaner housing top with the electronic control unit. You just set it aside on top of the windscreen wind screen wiper. And then we get to the intake air filter part. And from this will continue and uh, I'll get disassembling this and we get to the turbo but yeah from this on you take intake air temp sensor oh map sensor off it looks like a map sensor so it's intake intake air pressure sensor and I believe there's a temp sensor also and map sensor wire and the breather heater wire you take these off then you take the intake hose off and the box should should pull out from its housing i believe if there is a screw i don't believe there is a screw it's just just on there with the rubber grommet so you pull it off and then you see the turbo but we'll continue this video when I get get to that part so this is next thing you see when you're taking off the air cleaner housing it's just on two rubber grommets here and two in the back and then you can can take off this line this goes to here this line is holding the intake pipe so you can take that away from there you take this line off sorry this line and you take this electrical connector off from here then you can remove remove the intake ducting without taking the breather breather hose off because that thing is very sturdy in here and usually it'll break this connector so if you can avoid taking the hose off from either end that's good then you don't break anything and after that you can see the turbo and this is where things get a little tricky because you can see the return line when the car is on the ground and I need to figure out how to take off the oil return because everything else is easy you just take away this clamp these three bolts and the boost hose down there and then you remove this bracket and there is two holding bolts under the turbo that you must remove but first of all I need to figure out how to get the oil return from the turbo off and then we'll we'll continue this video all right next thing you do you take this aneroid out so you can get to the bracket holding the turbo one e10 in here and i believe it's e12 underneath then you get one bracket out and what do you know it's loose somebody's been here there are there are loose loose bolts in here but yeah i'll continue after this then you take away 
three E12s under the turbo. Two are mounted to the charging whirler and one is under the exhaust housing. About somewhere in that vicinity. Very, very hard to get to. So, now we are at this point that I am pissed off, frustrated and disappointed on the Mercedes engineers. Holy cow, what a piece of crap. Well, first of all, you can't get the turbo out in the car with the engine in the car. It just doesn't fit. You need to take the exhaust manifold off, but to get to this bolt, there is there is a mounting bracket right here, like this, when the manifold is in the car. And you need to remove this first. But to get to that, you need to take the bigger turbos flap valve aneroid off and to get that off you need to take the turbo off from the manifold because this this sits in here like so and the bolts are from this side It's in here like so. The bolts are from the inside and you cannot get to them before loosening the turbo from the manifold. So, now there's room. You can actually see, where's my light? I have misplaced so many tools and you can actually see now the return line down there and you can see where the bolts are and you can take them off and the AGR bolts are very hard to get to because they are bolted from the back side nice to nice to work with the Mercedes I would say this is the shittiest car I have ever worked on and I did, did this stuff for a living for many, many years, many, many years ago. And I am glad I don't have to work with this piece of shit today on the modern cars. I don't know. The engineers are getting more stupid and I'm allowed to say that because I am a certified engineer, so. So I don't know. It's been a battle, but now the turbo's loose and now it should come off. So, we'll continue this video when we have cleaned up parts and thinking about if I'm going to use the old casket or get a new one, if the local shop has a new one on stock. So, I have, I have today and tomorrow to get this back running, so... The missus needs the car on Sunday. So having a lovely day. I thought this would be a little more easy. I expect it to, to be harder than average. But to be this hard, no. Oh yeah, and I forgot. I needed to cut the DPF brackets mount because you cannot get that mount off. This one. The bolt doesn't want to come off, and if you can't get this off, there's no way to get to these two nuts when it's in the car. This has been designed to be disassembled out of the car, not in the car. So yeah, if you're considering swapping the turbo, think again. I am not having fun anymore. And yeah. 
We have the turbo on the ground. Need to clean the return and need to loosen up to the feed line because that's in the way. I'm gonna change the o-ring on that one and yeah need to find two spanners they're somewhere in here and at least two bolts are unaccounted for one nut is missing yeah this is this is not for the faint of heart if you have not done extensively car repairs and stuff i wouldn't i wouldn't re recommend this to anybody but yeah i'm a professional i worked on these things for a lot of years but to be honest this was the hardest turbo turbo removing that i can remember but yeah Oh yeah, for the bracket, that's it's it's this one here, and that's why I needed to cut it because you cannot get it off. It supports the DPF, and this is blocking access to this bolt. And yeah, I cut cut it, and I can get it away much easier now but well, holy crap this was difficult i thought the return light and bolts would be the hardest ones but there was that one the exhaust manifold bolt that was the that was the hardest one but yeah i'll start cleaning and thinking about what i replace and whatnot um, at least I'm going to going to replace the replace the turbo for the better one. But yeah, anyways, we'll continue this when I get something more done. Bye.